Hello. In this video, we're going to go over finding the limit of a square root function. Well, square root involved function. So when we are finding the limits, we need to be very careful. When we start going over this equation, we notice that when I plug in three for X, we get what is called a zero on the denominator and a zero on the numerator. This becomes a zero over zero, which in the future, we will do El Hopi Tall's rule. However, in this situation, we're going to focus that this is the beginning of calculus class and we do not know what El Hopi Tall's rule is. So in order to solve this limit, what we need to do is somehow factor or cancel out the denominator so we no longer have a zero on the denominator. We know I'm never allowed to divide by zero. So zero must not be in the denominator. So first things I can do is we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. What do you mean conjugate, Aaron? Well, the conjugate is going to be the opposite of what you see to create a perfect square on the numerator in order to cancel out my square roots. So what I multiply to the top, I multiply to the bottom. And the conjugate is going to be the same terms, so square root of x plus 6 and 3, with just the sign in the middle flipped. The reason for that is we just created a perfect square, a minus b, a plus b, which we know turns into a squared minus b squared. We can ignore the middle terms. It's a shortcut for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply these two subtracted by the multiplication of these two. So let's do it. We're going to move on and say square root of x plus 6 times square root of x plus 6 is just x plus 6 minus 3 times 3, which is 9. That's it. That's all you have to do for that top guy with, when we're multiplying by the conjugate because it creates this shortcut. I do not need to write out those middle terms. Why? Because if I did, it would be a squared minus ab plus ab plus b squared. Those terms will cancel. So we know our middle terms cancel. We can ignore them. And then on the denominator, we're going to write them out just as it is. Do not combine them because our foil, because it'll just get weird. We're going to simplify the numerator a little bit. 6 minus 9 is x minus 3. And what do you see? Well, what I see is I see a binomial, I believe that's what that's called, a binomial on the numerator and the denominator that is exactly the same. I can now cancel that. We will rewrite what we have, limit of x approaches 3 of 1 over square root of x plus 6 plus 3. Now that I don't have my x minus 3 in the denominator, I'm going to plug in my 3. And as long as I don't get a 0 in the denominator, we are okay. And 0 over 0 is not okay. So, well, not, not okay. It's just not preferred. It's not the answer. So, limit <clears throat> as x approaches 3, we plug in 3 for x. 3 plus 6 plus 3. And we slowly solve it out. And we slowly see that our limit of this function as x approaches 3 is equal to 1 over 6. Easy, not bad, a little weird for sure, but not bad at all. So the first thing what we did is we wrote down our problem. We recognize that we have a 0 over 0 and a 0 in the denominator. We recognize we must factor and or cancel and or multiply by a conjugate. We choose to multiply by a conjugate due to the square roots being involved. We can multiply the conjugates to each other nice and easily because it creates a perfect square, a squared minus b squared. The middle terms are canceled. We multiply through. We clean up the top. We cancel top and bottom. And we plug in our, our limited value, and that is it. That's all we got to do. So these problems aren't too bad. If there's a specific question you would like me to cover or just another one of these in general, please just send me an email. I'm always happy to do it. Other than that, I hope everyone has a great day.